How's it going guys? I'm Shifty Cow, and in today's video we're going to be talking about 10 tips that you can use to improve your gaming skills. So these are pretty general tips and they can be used across from PC and console so it's kind of just a general thing and also they're going to cover games from shooters to adventures to really just whatever. So if you guys do go on to enjoy the video and they help you out be sure to leave a like down below and also this is a top 10 list so it is going to be opinionated. If you have any other tips feel free to leave those down in the comments below but anyways guys let's hop in to number one. So starting things off, we have probably one of the most important tips of this video, and that is to have a wired internet connection. The difference between a wireless and a wired internet connection when it comes to gaming can make a massive difference. Not only are you going to have better download and upload speeds, but also you're going to have a lower ping, a better connection, and less chance of getting disconnected from games. So chances are you can pick one of these up at Amazon for like 10 bucks and run it all the way through your house if you need to. And for people struggling with games lagging and things like Call of Duty, Battlefield, really just games where it's very important to not lag, this can be pretty much the best thing you can do to fix that. So if you can't get an ethernet cable and you can't run it through your entire house, at least have an up-to-date router and it always helps to reset that every once in a while. Moving on to number two, we're going to be talking about your display. So a lot of people who play on console tend to play on a TV just because it's convenient, it's large, a lot of your friends can look at the same screen, but one of the biggest downfalls when it comes to playing on a TV is its latency. Now if you don't know what latency is, it's basically the time it takes for your TV to receive input from your game console and then for it to project that image to you. So it's kind of a complicated process of how it gets all transmitted, but basically the lower the latency the better and faster you're going to be able to be. So on a lot of monitors it tends to be a lot lower than TVs, so if you can, try and play on a monitor, see if that kind of improves your game. But also if you are going to be playing on a TV, know that if you go into your settings, a lot of times TVs have something called a gaming mode. Some do, some don't, but what that's going to do is it's going to lower your latency and give you a slightly different picture. So if you don't have this, you can always just boost up your brightness and your contrast, and that's just going to make it a little bit easier to see enemy players or really just things that you need to focus on. But if you're not having any problems with that, then just keep your settings where they are. So with tip number three, this is pretty similar to your display, but it is how far away you are from your TV or your monitor. So after doing some research online, a lot of health professionals or people who at least claim to be health professionals are saying that 16 to 30 inches is the ideal distance for a monitor, which is also 40 to 75 centimeters for those of you guys who don't use inches. And that's just kind of something that's really good for your eyes. And also if you're gaming, it's going to be best to be on a monitor that's 20 to 29 inches. So you don't want anything too massive but you also don't want to get too small that you can't see anything. So personally, I play on a 24 inch and that's just awesome for me, but you're going to have to do a little bit of playing around to figure out what works for you. So as for TVs, it really depends on the size and resolution. And so I've actually found a website and I'll link this in the description below and it tells you exactly what distance you should stand away from your TV. So you get the perfect image based on the resolution and also the screen size. So that's just kind of a really cool thing to see and you should definitely check it out if you want to optimize your image. Moving on to tip number four, we're going to be talking about 3D audio. So this is pretty self-explanatory. You can figure out where people are in a game based on the sounds in your headphones. So left, right, behind you. It's kind of a really cool thing and making the switch from a normal headset or even just no headset whatsoever using like a TV speaker or something and then going to 3D audio is really just mind blowing because first of all, you're able to locate people just based on their sound and also the audio quality is so much better than playing in an open room. So if you actually want to go out and buy a pair of these, they're generally going to be around $50 for a decent pair of just starter headphones, but it really just depends on the platform, if there's some sales going around, if you get wireless, wired, obviously wired are going to be a lot cheaper than wireless. But anyways guys, I have some XO4s that are by Turtle Beach, they were like 70 bucks and they've been really awesome, so I would recommend those, but you have to do a little bit of research because it has been a couple of years since I bought them. Hopping into step number five, this is something that could cost you a little bit of money if you do want to upgrade, but make sure that you have a wired mouse, keyboard, controller, whatever you're using, joystick, make sure that's wired because that's just going to further improve your latency, keep it nice and low, and also you're going to get a much stronger signal connection. Now obviously, mice and keyboard, it's pretty default for them to be wired, but if you're playing on a console, typically those are wireless, and I would highly recommend that if you are playing something competitive, feel free to just buy one of those like 
15, $20 plug and play packs. That way you can get the cord, you can plug it into your console, and it's really gonna help out your signal connection and just kind of improve how fluid you move. So if you don't wanna play wireless and you just wanna use that to actually charge your controller, that's always a good thing. I really love those types of things because you never have to buy batteries. But anyways, guys, it is gonna be better to have a wired accessory. So moving on to step number six, this has a lot less to do with your actual setup and more to do with just you as a player. So if you're trying to practice and just get better at a game and you're really just not having any fun, you're getting totally trash bagged and just destroyed, don't force yourself to play games if you're not having fun. You're not going to learn anything or teach yourself new tricks if you're just pissed off and mad at the game. It's just, it never works. It never works if you want to do well. So what I would do, take a break. If you're really pissed, go jog around the block, go write a book, go, I don't know, film a poem, just do whatever, take a break, come back in like 15 minutes after you cool down and try again because people do not play video games well when they're pissed off. So take a break, come back and practice some more. Moving on to step number seven, this is something that really just applies to everything in life, and that is if you want to get better at something, watch the pros. If you want to get better at basketball, watch basketball pros. If you want to get better at CSGO, watch people who are really good at CSGO. It's kind of just pretty straightforward, and honestly, there are thousands, probably millions or billions of hours of just content on YouTube dedicated to gaming. There's stuff on Twitch, there's competitions. There is tons of stuff to watch, and really, if you just watch a little bit, if you watch some tips and tricks videos, some how-tos, some like tactical walkthrough videos, there is a ton of stuff that you can find to improve your game. Now, you're not going to get better at a game just by watching it, so while you're watching it, think about what they're doing, why they're doing it, are there certain tactics to the map, are there certain areas that are better than others, kind of just watch how they play the map, or how they're doing things, how they're using certain abilities, or really just whatever, it just depends on your game, and then while you're actually playing it, think about what they did and try and mimic it or imitate it in your own game. So that's really just the best way I can describe watching stuff and then actually using it to your advantage rather than just watching it and being like, wow, that was really cool. I wish I could do that. Actually think about what they're doing while you're playing the game. Up next with tip number eight is consistency. So this is something that's pretty straightforward. You wanna make sure that when you do find the correct sensitivity or DPI for your liking, that you don't change it around a bunch and you're sticking to the same number over and over and over again. So this has to do a lot with muscle memory. Some people don't think that this is like a real thing. And honestly, it's, it's kind of silly to not think it's a real thing. If you do something over and over and over again, you're going to remember that. Like that's just kind of how you work as a human. And so you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're as consistent as possible with your DPI, your sensitivity, and also going between games. You wanna make sure that it's as close as possible to other games. So there's actually a website just dedicated to like mouse DPI if you're hopping between a bunch of games and you wanna make sure it's the same in Counter-Strike as it is in Battlefield, then you can check out this website in the description below. But anyways, if you don't wanna do that, there's a couple of different ways to do it with like a ruler and a piece of paper, which you probably find on YouTube. And also with a controller, it's not quite as precise and really there's like a zero to 100% bar that you can slide between or it's a zero to 12. You're gonna have to do some math and try and figure out what's you know right for you, but really just find something that's similar to how it is in other games and you'll be just fine. Moving on to step number nine, this is something that might be a little bit challenging for some people, but it is to play with other people or play with your friends. So if you're playing with people in a competitive shooter or a tactical game, it's going to be incredibly helpful to have callouts. You get extra information, you can learn where enemies are, you can learn what to do, or you can just ask people what their opinions are on certain things of the game. Do you like this thing better or do you like this? Should I choose this or that? And really, it can just kind of be helpful to have an extra person to kind of guide you through the game, teach you the ways of the masters or stuff like that. But anyways, if you guys do play with your friends, it's also gonna help you in a couple other ways because you're probably not gonna be pissed off playing with your friends, chances are, just saying, but if you're not quite as pissed off, like I said earlier, you're probably gonna be doing better and you're less likely to rage quit and you're gonna get more practice. So that kind of just flows all together and it's really just a good thing to play with people. And finally, we have the last tip of this video and that is to think while you play. If you're just playing a game and you're trying to have fun, you need to knock that shit off because you are playing a game, you are trying to get better, you are practicing and you wanna be very conscious of the decisions you're making and how you're actually playing the game. So rather than just running in all willy nilly, Think about the options you have and what could happen if you entered that room, if you went up the stairs, or if you did all these different things, and just be kind of conscious of what you're doing. So that's kind of just a tactics thing, and you kind 
of start to develop that as you play more and more video games. So really, that's those are all my tips. Those are my top 10 tips for you guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy them. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Leave any extra tips that you guys have down in the comments below. I do read all of them. And hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. But uh, anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. So until next time, stay buttery.